Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, part of the thesis is to ensure that the home prices are continuing to move up, uh, that we have low inventory levels, and that we're in an expansionary phase of real estate. Uh, that's important, so what I'm going to go over is November 2021's monthly housing market trends report going over that data of real estate. And I like to go over this, keep you up to date on all of our uh, leading indicators. These are leading indicators of how the market is doing for an inflationary environment. So I'm going to jump in here, go over some of the highlights here. So active listing count says the national inventory of active listings declined by 26% over last year, while the total inventory of unsold homes, including pending listings, declined by 16.2%. The inventory of active listings is down 55.5% compared to 2019. Your active listings. Here are the years, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. We are continuing to decline, and our inventory is continuing to get eaten up over time, uh, and it's, it's lower than what it's ever been. So we are in a huge seller's market, a huge bull market in real estate, and it continues to eat through inventory. Newly listed homes, it's following its seasonal trend. It's coming on down. Uh, this doesn't really matter. This is just the number of listing counts. It's just showing that the number of listings are declining over time. People are probably afraid to sell their house because they can't buy another one. It, the inventories are that tight. So they, they, they prefer not to sell their house because they can't buy another one. A, a seller would be an, a potential buyer for a lot of people. They don't own multiple homes. Homes continue to sell 10 days faster than last year. We are way down here. We're selling homes faster. Uh, than we ever have before. Uh, so not only do we have low inventories, the next thing that's paired with low inventories is that we're moving the inventory faster. That is the natural effect of inventories getting eaten up, is that they move faster and that we have a supply to demand ratio. The ratio of buyers to sellers are far higher than what it's ever been in the past. So our days in the market is continuing to decline. The median listing price continues to move up. I see no signs of any bearishness or any reason why house prices are going to fall. Looking at this data, and guess what? The median listing price is remaining robust. It is seasonal. Usually it peaks somewhere in July, goes flat or down a little bit like these years, and then it resumes upward after December. December is the cheapest portion uh, usually of the year in terms of seasonality from going down there and it starts to reverse higher in the January numbers for January. So we're up 8.6% year over year in November of 2021. So that that's the data there, price reduced shares. I'm not really too interested in that. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you look, there's a lot of spots. I mean, some are up 32% in the median listing price year over year. Uh, some like 19%. That's kind of where I live, Denver, Aurora area. Uh, thirty percent in Las Vegas, man. There's some there's some really high appreciation areas. There's some that are down, like Rochester, New York's down thirteen percent, but most of them are up. Tampa's a lot of Florida ones were up quite a bit. Texas is up quite a bit uh, in terms of prices. But this is more data for the thesis. I just wanted to go over this so you guys understand it and you know it. Uh, it's there in front of you, saying, "Yep, um, the data all looks good for home prices to continue higher." Would I buy a house right now? Yes, I would. I would lock in my costs. I think an inflation, inflation, we're going into an inflationary period. I think we won't see lower rates. I would lock in my costs because not just because of rates, but I want to lock in my, my, my costs and I'll let inflation eat away my, uh, my mortgage. And that's exactly what I did. I just bought, you know, a while back when home prices were, were even cheaper, a lot cheaper, but I would still be a buyer because we don't have the inventory. This is going to continue to get worse and rent prices are going to continue to go higher. So. Higher rent prices, higher home prices, higher rates of inflation. If you lock in a 30-year fixed rate mortgage and you have higher rates of inflation, it's going to eat away. It's a negative real yield where you loan $300,000, you pay them back with less purchasing power dollars over that time. You're just giving them back garbage, paper currency with, with less purchasing power. And it's going to, so you might give them back $200,000 in purchasing power when you got $300,000 when you took the loan out. That's the time you, you take on debt is when you have low interest rates and, and all this stuff. Now, is interest rates going up going to impact the housing market in a negative way? It will not because people are going to make more money. We're seeing the low end of the market make more money. We have a shortage of workers in the gen, in the gen 
Z area. Eventually, there'll be a shortage in home buyers at that point 10 years from now because there are going to be less of them. So I agree with that. The, home, the demographics does not support this to last forever. But we're going to have labor shortages. We're going to have increased, uh, increased costs of labor. And I think that millennials do have the money to buy this stuff. And I hear that all the time. Millennials don't have the money. They're broke. I'm a millennial. I'm not broke. You're talking to the oldest millennial here. A mil- I have over a million dollars in net worth uh, for uh, a millennial. I have lots of millennial friends. They're all engineers. Guess what? They all own homes. 20, 26-year-olds, 27-year-olds, 28-year-olds, 29-year-olds, uh, they all own homes. And uh, other ones that I know that they're trying to buy, they can't buy because there's just not enough homes. They're getting outbid. They're all out there bidding for them. Millennials have m- more money than what you think. And guess what? We're gonna, the millennials are going to move up f- at a faster pace than anyone else in their career development. Why is that? Technology is allowing people to move up faster. They can make more money. And there's a lot of people that are going to have to backfill all these baby boomers that are retiring, which is a whole bunch of high-level positions. Uh, Gen X, we're not large enough. Uh, and I, I say we, I'm on the edge. I'm a, I'm a 1981 birthday. I'm on the edge of Gen X and millennial. I'm probably the oldest millennials is what most people would would call my age group. And we're going to have to step up and, and take these higher level positions in some of these companies. So there's no one to fill in. And millennials are going to move up at the fastest pace, in my opinion. That's what I've seen with a lot of millennials. They're taking senior manager positions. They're, they're, they're moving up faster than anyone I've ever seen. And it's because there's ho- holes opening up everywhere in these companies. They're going to make more money than what you think. Uh, a lot of people are really negative, but you know what? Negativity doesn't get you anywhere. It does not get you anywhere. You got to be positive. You got to look for the opportunities and you got to take them when they're there. We're going to see a whole bunch of opportunities with these baby boomers uh, moving and, and going into retirement. Uh, some of the older Gen X are also moving. And, and I think there's less people willing to take large corporation jobs. And I think they're going to have to pay more eventually at some point. And if we're going into an inflationary environment, they're going to pay more and more and more to get labor if they can't get it. It's just the nature of the market, supply and demand. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.